Racist remarks, screaming at the crew, constant bickering? Some actors have made their reputation known for being the most difficult actors in Hollywood. Keep watching to find out who made the list and why. Leah Michelle, the actor who shot to stardom as Rachel on Glee, apparently did not get along with co-stars when the cameras were off. In her memoir, Sorry Not Sorry, Dreams, Mistakes, and Growing Up, the late Naya Rivera wrote that Michelle apparently wasn't thrilled about Santana becoming a bigger character. Rivera recalled, I think Rachel, erm, I mean Leah, didn't like sharing the spotlight. At that point, their strained relationship turned cold as ice. Rivera continued, Soon she started to ignore me, and eventually it got to the point where she didn't say a word to me for all of season six. In 2020, some more co-stars called Michelle out. In a since-deleted tweet, Glee actor Samantha Marie Ware wrote, Remember when you made my first television gig a living hell? Ware later told Variety that Michelle threatened her job. Glee alum Heather Morris also tweeted about her former colleague. She wrote, Was she unpleasant to work with? Very much so. For Leah to treat others with that disrespect that she did for as long as she did, I believe she should be called out. Michelle issued an apology on Instagram, writing, We all can grow and change and I have definitely used these past several months to reflect my own shortcomings. I'm trying to stage a comeback here. Okay, but what exactly are you coming back from? Known to many as the Saturday Night Live breakout star who moved on to cultural juggernauts like Austin Powers and Wayne's World, Mike Myers' behavior behind the scenes may not be so funny. As So I Married an Axe Murderer director Thomas Schlamme claimed to EW, there were days when the actor flat out refused to come out of his trailer and work. Penelope Spheris, who directed Myers in Wayne's World, told EW, Myers was emotionally needy and got more difficult as the shoot went along. Producer Rob Freed alleged to the outlet that Myers would, quote, emote and threaten and express anger to get his way. In a 2022 interview with Screen Rant, Spheris said Myers' perfectionism was a driving force. He wanted everything to be just right. Honestly, it was a little bit like walking on eggshells dealing with him, because I didn't want to say the wrong thing or set him off or anything." Amy Hill, who appeared with Myers in The Cat in the Hat, told the AV Club working with him was a nightmarish experience, and added, he had his handlers dress his trailer, and his area was all covered with tenting because he didn't want anybody to see him. It was so weird. When the Los Angeles Times asked Myers about the rumors regarding the supposed So I Married an Axe Murderer set drama, he said, "...we were all very passionate. Some some people misinterpreted my passion as insanity. When Casey Affleck was nominated for an Oscar for Best Actor in 2016 for Manchester by the Sea, it stirred up all kinds of drama. Back in 2008, the actor was accused of sexually harassing cinematographer Magdalena Gorka and producer Amanda White while working on I'm Still Here, as reported by USA Today. Gorka, who sued Affleck for $2.25 million, described the experience in her claim as, quote, by far the most traumatizing of her career. She said she woke up in the middle of the night to find Affleck in in bed next to her. White's allegations included claims that Affleck called women cows and manhandled her when she rebuffed his sexual advances, according to The Guardian. The cases were settled and Affleck went on to win that Oscar, and the backlash continued. As Time noted, critics maintain that honoring men who have been accused of such behavior continues a cycle of sexism in the industry. After actor Brie Larson made a point to not applaud or shake his hand when presenting him with a statue, she told Vanity Fair, I think that whatever it was that I did on stage kind of spoke for itself. As for Affleck, he told the AP, I behaved in a way and allowed others to behave in a way that was really unprofessional, and I'm sorry. The hit show Grey's Anatomy turned Katherine Heigl into a superstar, but it was also the show that branded her with a big D for difficult. According to People, after winning an Emmy in 2007, she made the gutsy move not to submit her name for consideration in 2008. She stated, I needed juicy, dramatic, emotional material and I just didn't have that that season. The star not only trashed the show's writers, she also threw the producers under the bus. On The Late Show with David Letterman, she complained about her long first day back at Grey's in 2009. I'm going to keep saying this because I hope it embarrasses them. A 17-hour day, which really? I think is cruel and mean. Another comment that got the 27 Dresses star in hot water came during an interview with Vanity Fair where she described Knocked Up as being a little sexist. She continued, It paints the women as shrews, as humorless and uptight. And it paints the men as lovable, goofy, fun-loving guys. I had a hard time with it on some days. That said, she did add that the movie was the best filming experience of her career. In 2021, the actor told The Washington Post the way she was shunned in Hollywood was so bad at one point that she felt she needed to seek help. 
She explained, I asked my mom and my husband to find me somewhere to go that could help me because I felt like I would rather be dead. For those who still might call her difficult, she asked, what is your definition of difficult? Somebody with an opinion that you don't like? Chevy Chase charted his successful path from SNL to films like National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation and Caddyshack, but he reportedly burned a lot of people along the way, starting with the cast of SNL. In Live from New York, the complete uncensored history of Saturday Night Live as told by its stars, writers, and guests, the series' first openly gay cast member, Terry Sweeney, said working with Chase was not pleasant. Sweeney recalled, "...he acted horribly to me. He acted horribly to everyone." In the same book, Tim Meadows said of Chase, "...he didn't care about what he said. He had no qualm about telling you you're an idiot." Before Chase left SNL, he inked a deal with NBC without letting Lorne Michaels know. In Saturday Night, a backstage history of Saturday Night Live, an SNL writer called Chase a scumbag for exiting the series like that, adding, "...Chase was deceitful and dishonest about the whole thing." Fast forward to 2011, when Chase was caught calling Community a quote, mediocre sitcom in a leaked voicemail obtained by Celeb Buzz. This was followed by a report that Chase used the N-word on the community set. According to The Hollywood Reporter, he apologized to his co-stars. Months before the mutual agreement regarding Chase's departure from community, he told HuffPost UK that doing the show was a big mistake and called sitcoms the lowest form of television. Talk about biting the hand that feeds you, or should we say, used to feed you. Actor Alec Baldwin has made headlines for his work as well as his short temper, both on the set and off. In the 30 Rock book, Inside the Iconic Show, From Blurg to Egot, 30 Rock editor Doug Abel alleged Baldwin once threatened to assault director Adam Bernstein for what was described as holding up his thumbs to frame a shot. Director Paul Feig said, "...Alec Baldwin was a little challenging and the least fun one to work with." In another The 30 Rock book story, Baldwin apparently went toe-to-toe -to -toe with co-star Elaine Stritch after she added an extra line to the end of a scene. According to the book, Baldwin snapped, "...don't you last word me, you. It's my laugh line, you Baldwin reportedly accidentally shot and killed assistant director Helena Hutchins with a prop gun on the set of the movie Rust in 2021. According to NBC News, lighting chief Serge Svetnoy claims, "...Baldwin, along with others, was responsible for skimping on safety protocols and mishandling firearms." The lawsuit alleges that they were consciously aware of the wrongfulness and harmfulness of their conduct. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Baldwin and other producers are seeking a dismissal. There is no real me, only an entity, something illusory. Oscar winner Christian Bale is known for his amazing ability to transform himself to disappear into a role. But all of that discipline and control still couldn't keep the Dark Knight star from losing it on the set of Terminator Salvation in 2009, according to ABC News. When Shane Hurlbut, the film's director of photography, accidentally walked into Bale's eyeline while he was filming a scene with Bryce Dallas Howard, Bale was incensed. The actor flew into a rage, berating Hurlbut and throwing around countless F-bombs. While Hurlbut tried to calm him down with an apology, it only enraged the actor even more. Bale exclaimed, "...you are trashing my scene. You do it one more time and I ain't walking on this set if you're still hired." After his rant went viral, the Dark Knight star spoke to LA radio station K-Rock to set the record straight, saying, "...I was out of order beyond belief. I make no excuses for it." He added that he wanted to assure his fans he doesn't take his success for granted. "...I am a lucky man. I never forget that and that is why I put so much into what I do and why I care so much about it and why sometimes that enthusiasm just goes awry." Charlie Sheen, known for his work in stuff like Two and a Half Men, is a hugely successful sitcom star. But he's also earned the unwitting title of Hollywood's baddest bad boy, courtesy of The Independent. The Wall Street star has struggled with a long history of substance abuse, rocky relationships, and legal battles. According to TV Insider, production was about to resume on his hit CBS show after shutting down for one of Sheen's stints in rehab. In a radio interview with Alex Jones, the actor went off about Warner Brothers producer Chuck Lorre, calling him a clown and a stupid little man. In a statement obtained by TMZ, Warner Brothers terminated Sheen in March of that year because he had engaged in what they called dangerously self-destructive conduct and said he appeared to be very ill. Sheen, who ironically went on to star in Fox's Anger Management, told Yahoo Entertainment in 2021 that he does have regrets. Sheen said he was offered the company Jet once to go to a rehab facility. If he had just agreed to buckle up and fly right, would he still have the sweetest deal on TV? Who knows? Knows. He shared, "...there was 55 different ways for me to handle that situation, and I chose number 56. However you want to label it, it has to start with absolute ownership of my role in all of it." 
check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.